Hello, Warlords. Raj here. Welcome to Saga Thor's Day. Once again, we are joined by Monty. How, how are you, man? Good, Raj. How about yourself? I am excellent. Lord Montague, it's good to see your face at the end of these <laughs> many weeks here. <laughs> kind of regularly now, right? Yeah, we're going for regular. So we're recording this uh, essentially a week or so early. So the idea is we record these fresh, get them out immediately, and have topical conversation. But due to my trip here, I will be going out of the country. So this is recorded a little bit early, but still there's been a lot that's happened since last time so first off for these monthly uh, chat sessions here i wanted to address some of the the comments we received on our last one which i think that initial one turned out pretty good what do you think bonnie oh yeah i, I liked it okay. two, two thumbs up yeah i think it's a good you know i have like a lot of thoughts about various things but um you know, a lot of those are just like a 90 second discussion, not a full blown YouTube video to discuss something. So I, I think the format works good. So Hercus Monty, who has his own YouTube channel, he says, really like the format. Perfect accompaniment for a painting session. Nice. Which I have to agree. A very podcast like experience for sure. And I think going forward, we're going to work on our photograph integration here to have what we're talking about be represented in uh, the, the picture on the screen, which um, was tricky to implement last time. But we're going to figure it out. And so hopefully this time we can do a little better job of that. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you are just sitting here watching our faces instead of painting, <laughs> you, you, re you really should be painting, I, I would say. Don't you yes. think, Monty? Yes, um, yes. So... This next question, I feel it's more of a Monty question, but John Talby says, in my saga group, my classic Viking players are demoralized because what they could achieve in version one, they cannot achieve in version two, and now they get beaten by loads of armies. Are there any tips for original recipe Vikings that could give my players back some mojo? Uh, and then he says he's off to paint Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table. But uh, Monty, do you have any ideas here? Uh, yeah, about so, the, the Vikings. So that's interesting. Let's see if we can kick this one around a little bit. Um, sure. The first thing is, I was a little bit surprised. V one to V two, the the general consensus is that the Viking players um, struggled a little bit in V one, especially as uh, some of the more tooled up war bands came along. And mm -hmm. I know, like one of my um, favorite Viking opponents locally. He now, um, you know, we run neck and neck in those games, and especially when I'm trying to run my Welsh. Um, but, but nevertheless, the question is, like, what are they struggling with and how can they do better? And so the first thing that popped in my mind um, that we don't know the answer to is we don't know, like, what opponents are really roughing them up. Um, I mm -hmm. know, as someone who likes the shooty builds, that Odin is like a fabulous takedown ability two common dice and it messes me up when i run my welsh or irish or normans against them because if i'm foolish enough to shoot once that's loaded up and by the way it's loaded up all the time from the beginning i'm going to get a unit exhausted out and then they're going to come across the table they're going to devour that unit then they're going to get the next one so mm -hmm. it makes me as a shooty faction um you know i got to figure out how to play without shooting and that that's a game changer so <clears throat> so that's like definitely if they're not doing that even though it is two dice um if your opponent has some shooting i would say bring that in um, and, and I don't want to just have me kick it around. So you thinking about this and thinking about your local uh, WASA guys, do you have any thoughts? Um, yeah, I kind of do. I, one thing I would say, if they haven't brought in their levies yet, I, I'd say get, give those guys a shot with the javelins, the plus one to hit. They'll give you some more bodies on the battlefield to absorb units. You can split them up into two units of six and... Um, they can dish out some damage with the with the javelins, the plus one to hit, and yep. I can't think of the ability right now, but I believe I declared it my new nemesis. I haven't played against the Vikings for a while, but what you, if you get a six and it turns yes. into two hits, yes, it um, does. So you have that in addition to Uller. So I think you really have two two good attack powers loaded up there, and I would recommend if they're in a funk, giving the the levies a shot because that's. Definitely a, a unit that wasn't really viable in the, the first part. I think they were just archers. Yeah, I, can't, yeah. I can't remember what levy option they had. But I think 
giving those guys a shot could breathe a little a little life into to their board for sure. Agree, hundred percent. I've seen some of my buddies run um, archers because that's what they had painted up, and it's kind of an interesting dynamic. With Odin, the other guy doesn't get to shoot if he has any shooting, right? Assuming mm-hmm. he has shooting, that's why Odin's up. And then you, in turn, can flip the switch and go. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna just pepper you here and there and and it's like it's a different dynamic it's a different option so i agree um the one point of levy be it bow or the javelin with the plus one to help uh, leverage the sixes and fives and sixes being uh, double hits definitely worth a run out um i would sneak in one other idea and and this Mm -hmm. is something i think about like um with our local guys in our club right um you get players and um and you know and they're struggling a little bit you want to help them out um, it might be something that uh, either their opponents maybe can help them with a little bit. Maybe there's something when the game's done, they can give them like a couple mm-hmm. minutes, suggestions, feedback. Maybe it has to do with terrain. Uh, you know, you're the Vikings, but you don't necessarily want to just go mad crazy in certain circumstances. And oh, one other thing, we, for mm-hmm. sure we should sneak this in. Um, if they haven't seen it already, I would put in a big plug for the Saga Thursday uh, that you did with um, oh, yeah, oh, Mike, yeah. Mike Mahalis. Yes, there we go. Mike, he did a fabulous job. That thing was chock-a-block full of uh, good tips for Vikings. True, yeah, absolutely. And I thought we were going to go there, but uh, maybe you stopped short. But if your opponents are willing, I would switch armies too because yeah. uh, they might surprise you. They might know how, how to beat themselves, and they might not be able to <laughs> resist if uh, going going up against them, their other army, you know, whatever thing they were afraid of you doing that you just never quite thought of they might be perfectly willing to unleash when when you were at the helm of their own army so that would be a suggestion to get a a good look at your own army from the other side of the table and then you know it's just fun to to try other armies and stuff like that and then uh, I, i guess the last thing is if they were having trouble with the viking board but still want to use the models um, they could run Anglo Danes very easily, the Yams Vikings, or even push for for pagan ruse. I think that would be perfectly fine with most folks. So, trying out some of the other boards too, I think. Agree. Excellent. Could, could be a good way to mix things up. So, thank you for the the comment, John. Anything else about that, Monty? Before we move on. I would just sneak in one small thing, um, and it's assuming a little bit here. I know it's easy to come out to the club with your army, play your buddy's army, you play the same boards, you're kind of tired, you're like, what should we play? Let's play Clash of the Warlords. Okay, that's great, but there's a whole universe of amazing scenarios. If you can't kind of get stuck in a rut, um, I highly, highly recommend changing it up. Roll, make it random, pull out of the Book of Battles. If you don't have the money for Book of Battles, uh, go to the Saga Forum, and they have amazing packets and scenarios, homebrewed stuff, and they just, you know, just change up the scenario. It's going to probably change up the results. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a really good point, too. The Clash of Warlords, I know, was getting pretty old by the time Book of Battles came out for for us, so... Um, yeah, getting those scenario cards out, which <laughs> next question up here, uh, Vorthrax, Raj, where'd you get those scenario cards? And then he immediately comments saying, never mind, I found them. So those are on the Studio Tomahawk website. You can print them out. So even if you don't have the Book of Battles, you can get access to the Battle of Heroes cards, which are a load of fun. And then, um, so mine, um, I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to make a video about mine. So these are basically printouts, but they're, they do have sleeves and little cards inserted into them. And I did have to mess around with the format and stuff. But if people want to copy that, uh, I'll probably give out the resources for that in a future video. Um, Scatter dice. So great talk. I've had three trial games with the Horde and one game using... The Under Earth, and I must say, I really like the latter. So, Age of Magic here. I used two units of 12 warriors and only one levy with 12 bows. The rest was a mix of creatures, a cannon, and a smaller size warrior unit. No hearth guard, and he's really liking the alchemist as a fatigue harasser. So, good deal. Monty, yep. did you try the cannon with the Under Earth yet? The you know, I have it painted. Machine? 
I have a painted. I have not used it. I've myself have fallen in a rut with my builds, and I look at that. <laughs> like in my mind, I'm like, okay, I, I'm gonna put this cannon. I need to put it somewhere, and then like I won't be. You know, it'll be kind of static, won't move. But yet, when I play against people using uh, war machines, the uh, especially the static war machine, boy, you stumble within the 12 inch reach. Yes, and that I is. I start like sweating, and I'm like, what have I done? I'm tr- and I'm trying to deal with this threat, and then I'm getting blasted over there, and I'm like, uh so I really, I really like. Just like I gave advice, I need to follow some advice. I need to change my list up because uh, I got spanked last time I ran the uh, Under Earth. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, um, we're gonna talk about it a little bit in my my game that I played recently. But after afterwards, we had a long discussion about the the static war machine and whether you know just having more levy uh, would be better or not. But I have to say that plus one to hit. And then if you do get in, in with the 12 inches and you're already uh, like a quadruped creature or a calf or something, you know, hitting on twos, uh, it's just like guaranteed wounds. Yeah, it's, it's it's nasty. So Horrifying. Um, you kind of want to put it off to the side, but then I think there is something to getting it right in the middle there and say, yep. come, on, come on in, baby. Exactly. Uh, especially you probably me, – me. Maybe if you have like firearm warriors, we only get one shot anyways, really. So having those additional shots uh, could, could be helpful in taking stuff out. But um, and I, I think we can both agree that Alchemist is an excellent fatigue yes. harasser. Yep, that determination when your dice get slim, he's still able to shoot without using a die. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, moving down, we got Parabot 2. Do you mind covering a fact next show uh, regarding resilience? Um, so if I have a Warlord with resilience 2 and take 4 hits, it takes 1 fatigue per 2 hits. So it would take 2 fatigue in this situation. So, yeah, that that is example how that works. Um, if you have time one day, I'd love to see some tactics examples of warbands on the tabletop and why you're taking attack versus defensive moves. So, yeah, we're looking to dig in to some of those more advanced tactics. I know I've got some I, uh, movement type tactics in mind, and I think Monty, you've seen those topics yes, in I have. our little uh, agenda yep. to to do list. Um, so, uh, we can definitely get into that. And thank you to. Uh, this follow-up poster, Vorthrax, where he just went into resilience a little bit more and explained it for for Parabot. But um, any comments about resilience, Monty? Um, mm, without I, necessarily getting into the nuts and bolts, um, when do you, maybe spending fatigue on models with resilience? Ooh, oh my so, gosh! So that could be yes. a, a very good topic. <laughs> It really and could. It's 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 an art. I mean, you think it should be a science, it should be math, but invariably, if I try to just roll through and get my fives and sixes, I roll a handful of ones through fours, yeah. and then if I spend the one to get you know up my odds, I mean, it's you, it's kind of seat of the pants. Yeah, I'm. I really should have a calculator, <laughs> or or some be able to do math in my head. I don't know. I, I know. I've been thinking about just crunching the numbers because like I'm always thinking about it and there is like right. a mathematical uh smart move depending on the number of attack dice you have and yep. your your yep. bonuses versus yep. how many moods you need to get through um so maybe in the future we'll have that but um so let's pull back from from age of magic with the creatures and the monsters and stuff and uh, let's just go back to to historical saga where typically it's just going to be the warlord Yep. who has it and let's just say he's a standard warlord so do you have a rule of thumb do you like leave it 90 percent of the time would I you, leave would it you most say the, is you just yeah, kind of default leave it, exactly i leave it most of the time and um i've been lucky a couple times where i'm flubbing it and it's near at the end of the game and um i look around and like you're trying to like find the most efficient way to like you know finish the job and mm-hmm. if you have shooters around, I mean, it's shocking how efficient they can be sometimes to just nudge that warlord over. I've actually, like, at the top of one game, I had, like, the only unit left was levy archers who'd been out of the game the whole game, and I moved them up and took, like, two shots, rolled well enough, nipped the warlord, and took the game. So, I don't know. It's it's seat of the pants. A lot of saga seat of the pants and trying to go with Definitely. your gut. Yeah, that's a good point with the, the warlords just being armor five, so... Um, a lot of the time, I still think people aren't used to 
take taking shots on them because right. it was so pointless in the prior one being armor six and ignoring the first hit <laughs> that you know there was no reason to to shoot at them or make the effort but i think definitely now um there there is an opportunity there with the shooting and working yeah. in those levees with with your shooters um so finally we have anthony martin he's got a little paragraph here but basically he's kind of sad about all the facts and uh, the teeter tottering back and forth trying to uh, close every loophole and make everything perfectly balanced but it's ultimately unattainable so what's what's the point of everything a little nihilistic perhaps so um i think you know he, he kind of echoed some of our sentiment you know just unfortunately about um, new players and trying to get everything done but yeah, yeah. Um, he's talking about 100 pounds on beautiful quarterly rule books which you have to throw away after a couple of years uh, I guess I wouldn't go that far but um, I guess I would just encourage you to stick in there Anthony I think Saga is a great game and um, it's really just the the way that the rules are delivered and Studio Tomahawk you know is a game company so you have to make cover your costs somehow so the paper rule books are a must so um, hopefully you can just get on the same page with your buds and uh, you just ignore the facts or dig in. But all right. Well, I think that's enough about last episode, won't you say? Okay. So yeah. I guess for this episode, diving in. Um, so what sort of hobby progress have you, have you seen, buddy? So... Typically, we should have maybe three or four weeks in between sessions, but I think I think it's been two weeks <laughs> since last time it's, we recorded, so yep. we're a little little under the gun. I, I have plenty to talk about, but hopefully, yeah, sure, you're you're into some some goodness here. So, what what have you been up to? Yeah, so my number one is Saga Storm is coming up mid September, and I kind of you know some of these projects you back into. I adore the vit. Drix Vikings. They're just so oh, beautiful. Yes. I just, I wanted to get my hands on it. And then once I started thinking about it, I'm like, you know, I used to love the Norse Gale, and I feel like there's something in there. It's kind of, it's not entirely clear to me. You got to like keep feeding the board and clearing the board and moving stuff through. I don't know how to do it, but that'll be part of the puzzle. So, um, hobby wise, mm -hmm. painting wise, I got a box of Victrix Numidians and did uh, Dark Age head swaps. I had a bunch of heads and got some Dark Age, like little buckler, you know, skirmisher type shields. And um, they look pretty good and they're painting up pretty quick. And as I puzzle this out, um, I'm, I think I might be closer to the finish line than, than like maybe anticipated because to play, um, that'll give me two points, like having 24 uh, Levy Javelin Men. I mm -hmm. figure I will paint up three points of Hearthguard, paint up a Warlord, and somewhere over here I have a Viking uh, Warlord type who could be like a, um, what do they call it? Not the Mercenary, the... Um, oh gosh. He's like the right-hand man. Oh, um, yeah. The Mercenary guy, uh, the... Oh, good grief. Yeah, okay. I can't, can't, I can't well, think anyways, of the name right champion, now. Champion. Champion. There we go. Yeah. So that'll be a whole point with one figure already painted. So um, so I'm like, boy, the, the finish line is not too far away. I mean, I've, I've got, you know, I've got a little going on in the next month, but I should be able to do that and then roll into Saga Storm with a new war band. I'll get to play it all day. And when I come home, I'll be like, aha, I hope the light goes off uh -huh. and I understand what to do. And then it'll be be time to sell them. Get them out the door, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I've used these guys up. These these models are they're all used up. Time to get rid of them. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> I uh, hope to hold them a little longer. I'm pretty okay. sure it's going to take me a while to crack that board. I have a friend who was running them, and he got. I felt like he was getting close, and he's kind of moved on. So I'm like, I I, I think of those games, and I'm like, boy. I, I know like they're going to struggle in certain circumstances, but I don't care. For for just the fun, a lot of my buddies have Vikings, Anglo Danes, you know, foot mm -hmm. heavy. It'll be. I think our games will be fast. They'll be bloody and they'll be fun. Yeah. So that's that's what it's about. Um, they'll definitely be bloody, is, yeah. from what I recall. Uh, yep. I've only played one game against Norse Gales in the new edition, so um, it was quite quite fun, quite bloody, <laughs> as you mentioned. <laughs> so cool! Wow. So. 24 levy yes and i know it sounds weird people all have different approaches but yeah i think they're i think they're good but just from yeah. pure like model perspective 24 out the gate 
That's a that's a high figure count, buddy. Well, it is, but um, they're all wearing like the Numidian tunic. So I mean, they look very. I mean, they don't have shoes. Uh, mm-hmm. They barely have a shirt. And the nice thing is they have like very small, like they look like they have javelins, and then they're hand holding the buckler. I've got about six of them that are holding a couple javelins um, in their left hand. So you can't mistake what they look like. And the dark head, the, the head swaps seem to work out okay. I was a little mm-hmm. nervous because some of the heads were rather large. And then as soon as I started painting them up, I'm like, yeah, it's fine. You know, it blends in for the effect of uh, 24. It'll be, it'll be fine. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. But so, how about yourself? Uh, well, I'll get into that. I just... So there's Victrix Numidia. So you think those? Um, I was just looking at the Victrix site the yep. other day, be yep. getting prepped for our Age of Hannibal discussion here, and uh, those guys are definitely going to be a go-to model source once we get there. But so you think that those Numidians on foot will oh, make good? Like, could you build like a Irish warband or something out of those guys if you had the head or Welsh or? Yeah. I think you could. I think you could. I mean, the trick is, um, I, ha- I, oh man. So when I sold off a project, I kind of dumped some like extra stuff with it, and then like a month later, I'm like, I wish I hadn't dumped all those heads. Oh, um, so like it was, the bits it was, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I, I should have, you know, that was a, a kind of rookie mistake. But as long as you, you know, take your time. If you don't have them, look around. I think First Core health sets, uh, sells a bunch of like heads, and of course, since they're levy, I don't want them to have like like helmets so it's got to be like the bareheaded look that's just mm-hmm. me i'm looking for and some kind of like beardy looking guys and some shaved guys so i managed to like scrabble i hit up some of my friends and got you know enough heads to fill it out uh so the biggest push if you're going to do this thing is just like scrambling around and if you got it in your collection you're good to go uh but if you don't it'll be just sourcing some heads because the other guys it the heads don't look you know, they don't look yeah, dark. Yeah, they're like African. Yeah, yeah. There you uh, go. They got kind of almost heads. like a, yeah, exactly. They got a dread look or something going. So mm-hmm. anyways, yeah, okay. yeah. So I think it'll be good. Uh, well, yeah. So to get back to me, so my goal last time was to get the rest of my lads based up, the demons. And uh, since we're recording this early, I've still got a few more days until the end of the month. I'm just throwing that out there. But I, I'm essentially right at the finish line. So all I have to do is this last batch is I got to get the static grass and the flock on 20 or 30 guys. Um, I'm sorry, not the static grass and the leaf litter. So it's like the final things that I do. So that that's easy peasy. You know, it's the dry brushing and the painting of the blocks and the you know my my shades and such that I do Monty to really. You know, accentuate these ancient ruins and I'm just down nice. to my last eight so these are the plague drones from Warhammer Fantasy so they're flying they're on huge pillars of stone that I built up over these ruins and they look pretty cool so th- those are the last ones I have to do so literally tomorrow morning well I'll probably be editing this video but uh, <laughs> after that I will be just needed to kind of do the final inks on them and then they'll be good to go. So my mission essentially will be accomplished. So I'm nice. happy, happy to report that. And if you've been following my progress on the YouTube community um, channel, you know, more power to you. Thanks for the thumbs up and the support. I'm trying to get a photo up there every day and for the most part I've been successful. So um, it's cool seeing the comments there. But Um, One thing I'm not going to get to is the uh, special terrain piece. We have our tournament coming up, our second Age of Magic event here in Wausau, and we were going to do the special terrain, you know, unlock for each faction. So for my demons, it would be a portal and a little tentacles will whip out and grab guys and suck them back in. So I definitely want to use the piece, but... Um, you know, if, I, if I'm going to do it, I want to do it right and make sure it looks good. And I know there's going to be some putty work and some you know, tentacles in there somewhere, which uh, you know, is a little multi-day process. So uh, fortunately, I didn't get to that. I kind of wanted to, but uh, just not going to happen. But um, after my trip then, I, I, I don't know. I'm not going to declare anything quite yet. I'm not going to be so bold as I was last time. But it sounds like you're going to have your hands full, though, with those yeah. Norse gales, and we'll have plenty to report on. So, good deal. Well, if there's nothing further on that topic, why don't we go to 
recent games, Monty? Have you been? Okay. Do you play Saga even? I don't. I don't uh, even know. You know, every third Sunday or first Sunday. No, I I play it a little bit. Okay. Um, quite a bit. So um, just real quickly, I I did get my very first run out. There was a player who used to play Vikings in version one, and he wanted a demo game. So I brought him up to speed with a version two. I used my uh, abyssal. I used my abyssal dwarves as proxies for the Norse scale because oh, nice. I had some heavy weapons and get I, some I, practice I, in. Yeah. yeah I, I had no idea. I hardly had a clue what I was doing. We kind of fumbled through it like I was helping with the V2 changes. And we both would pause. And I'd be like, now, here's some good Viking plays. And then he'd look at my board and he goes, what if you did this with that? So it was, it was really fun. And it was pretty quick. And uh, I think we got a new player. So that's the best part, right? That's, that's what it's all about. Um, I snuck in a game. Uh, one of my buddies, it looks like he will be heading out for uh, um, the big event in Wausau, okay. and he wanted to practice with his uh, un, yeah, the undead. And so we did something with the, um, with the uh, pillage and loot. And so an interesting twist, I'm only going to throw this in because it was something that like in, in mid-game, you have to kind of get your head around this because, you, you know, a long time ago we played version one, then we have version two, now we have Age of Magic, and you sometimes have to like transition between thoughts and styles. And so um, he got some warriors, just basic warriors, up on an objective, and I hit them with my warlord on a beast, and then we tallied up, and uh, he closed ranks. So I think I, I rolled pretty well. I dished out like four or five unblocked hits. But he was like, he did the model count, right? He did the model count. And he's like, okay, uh, you, you know, presence, you count as four. And my unit is still at like, you know, uh, seven. So you retreat. But mm. what's the trick, right? The trick is, that's great. I retreat. But who won the combat? Because my warlord shook his with the resilience. I actually inflicted the casualties, and so as we, like, at first we did it wrong, and then we paused, we were like, wait a minute, I retreat, and I think I retreat with the objective, because I won, so, interesting, I don't know, I think oh, we got okay. that right, yeah, I know, it's a little, it's a little different, right, you have to, like, pause, because of the monsters and the resilience, but the fine print, the fine print in the, like, who won the uh, scenario, mm -hmm. um, rule book says you know casualties determined so if you inflict more casualties not hits casualties you win and so that's a reason to like use your uh, monsters creatures and warlord on a beast really hard to try to get up on those objectives oh cool well, thank you for that little tidbit it'll be very right? handy um <laughs> yeah so you so you guys did look that up and that's yeah, how we did. it should I be. I think played. I have it right. So, yes. if, okay. if I don't, uh, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure if, we have that if right. You we had were... just asked me how, how to play it just based on my. I would have said that the closing ranks and that bouncing off would have yep. meant they kept the objective. So, but I can see. I can see your logic, and I trust that um, you guys followed through. But yeah, that's a really good point uh, about the, the big guys there. So. You'd have more of those guys running around than you would in a normal game of Saga, to be sure. So, really interesting. Hmm, yes, yes. So, uh, I'll keep that in mind going in. Well, it's going to be interesting to do scenarios, I think, and having those big monsters running around, grabbing objectives and stuff. Yeah, you know, right. there's no no reason they, they can't. And, you know, plenty of other right. games um, indulge that conceit, but... Uh, and and you've got portals, so you guys can kind of fly around pretty effectively as long as you get yeah, those rares. Yeah, we can we can get to it. I uh, believe we when, once we have it, we would not be able to use the portal to to skedaddle or do do anything else. You still got to trudge all the way back to your your home lines there. So that'll be cool to to play. I'm looking forward to it. We we've just been using these cards like I was trying to get everybody riled up to work through the scenarios you know let's do them one a week or something like that and uh i'm sure people thought they're a good idea but then when it came time to play you know they didn't want to crack open the rule books i guess which uh, i may be one of those people as well so right it's like herding cats but mm -hmm. that's okay it's all about getting out and gaming whatever it's all good yeah so i played a game myself uh, since last time, I was using my demons again, using my three behemoth build, and wow. played against 
uh, Jeremy again, but he was using his great kingdoms this time. Okay. So he was trying out his build. And for shooting, he had a static war machine and then a unit of levies with crossbows. Nice. Um, and then the standard two two heroes. He had them mounted. He had the captain, the lord, uh, six hearth guard for, for bodies. And like, I'm so used to playing the warlord on the beast that... Like I thought, I caught him. I completely forgot that the Hearth Guard can take wounds for <laughs> right. the war, you know, because I haven't played with a warlord like that for you know four or five months now, and I think the majority of my games are also against other warlords like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so at one point, I'm like, ah, I got gotcha. you, like your warlord's dead, and then I'm like, oh no, like yeah, there's a bunch of Hearth Guards right there, and I built my whole plan around popping that warlord and you know going in and i'm like oh i just killed one guy you know killed a hearth guard that's not that's not going to be part of the plan here but with with the cards that we use uh, it was really interesting so we basically played in maybe like a third of the saga table just the way that the deployment worked out so i picked a spot and then he picks a spot okay you know basically 24 inches away um so i picked you know maybe kind of the middle of the one of the long sides and then he picked like kind of the middle of one of the short sides so we were just we're kind of you know he's coming in from the side and so we're just like immediately into battle except that we had forced march so each time we moved in the first two turns uh, it's made as though the opponent has used their fatigues, so it just slows, wow. okay. slows us down. Yeah. So, yeah. And then it was only a five-turn game, too, because of <laughs> cautious. Uh, so, uh, and it was survival points, carnage. So that, <laughs> that was a good game. I um, was very interested to see how the paladins held up to the, the behemoths. So that's... That's uh, money. That's payday there for those guys to see the behemoths mm-hmm. show up. Um, well, probably creatures are more excited about, but the behemoths. So I did push forward one of the behemoths and popped resilience three and plus one armor. And just, what can you do, baby? Come on. Yeah. So between everything he did, he could take it out in that one turn. <laughs> but it took some sheet- shooting, kind of nibbling at it. He sent in the paladin. The paladin ended up getting killed. Um, so he lost the paladin, but the behemoth went down. And so, um, after that though, just my kind of, uh, movement tricks and shenanigans always kind of left him, uh, on the back foot and, you know, just, he was scrunched up a lot. So every time I did take something, I was fatigue bombs going off. Yep. Yeah. Uh, That's tough. So he never quite recovered once those babies started going off. Exactly. But, um, I will say the board is really deceptive with activations. Um, you can use a lot of your dice for abilities. And so like he's got like one activation dice out. And then I'm like, well, he's not going to be doing anything this turn. But you got all the determinations and then the yep. two we obeys. And then you have war cry which gives you a charge activation. So it's an advanced saga ability. And then you have the, I think it's like enfilade or whatever to give you two yep. shooting activations. So For one die. Uh, they got a full turnout, even though there's just like, you know, it doesn't look like you can do anything. So uh, it was interesting to watch that unfold uh, the first time that I noticed that. But um, so the demons ended up taking it. Again, it was kind of a bloody game. Um, just squeaked out the survival points i think i had 18 to his 16 and then Close. with uh the special rules for whatever this one here is carnage you want to move out from your own table edge so ah. uh once again that's how i secure my victory over mm-hmm. those great kingdoms in a stand-up fight it's it's too close to call but due to the <laughs> movement bonuses and my teleportation techniques uh i eke out the win so that gave me like an extra six or eight points to secure a victory that'll do it so raj quick question mm-hmm. with three behemoths did you ever like did you have a problem getting those guys moving or hustling or did you did you get the right dice to get them moving no so yeah great question so uh, i think with the 
demons, the other world, you can really set the tone as far as um, getting to them quickly and stopping them from maneuvering. So um, just kind of pinning them in their deployment zone. So if they want to move out or move sideways, they have to use dice to do it. So you can do that through a portal or just using okay. flying yep. creatures. Yep. So yep. frequently when you do that, then you can save dice moving the behemoths up using uh, the maneuver abilities. Yep, And got then it. Um, I do have f uh, eruptions on my sorcerer, so flight, so I can get a more bang for my buck out of those activations with flight. Nice. Um, and then uh, the other thing is I would feed um, just minion activations ahead of time. So like on first turn maybe i ended with an uncommon or rare just sitting in that activation pool and then just always kind of making sure one or two turns ahead that there was dice sitting there so i only had seven saga dice anyway so it wasn't like hurting me um keep i mean you're going to keep a dice somewhere yeah so i just yeah. kept it because those guys you got to keep them moving they don't use saga abilities so you know just activating them you're going to get the big bang for your buck um, so that's another thing I did. So probably with the lists, having the just a normal warlord with We Obey, I, I think would be helpful. But then you'd probably want to take some hearth guards, maybe. And I don't have any hearth guards, so. Uh, but keeping the warlord on the the beast. I mean, I played several games now, and as long as I've kind of kept that flow of dice into their activations and. So far, my sorcerer's been kept alive, so I can get them flying around uh, very handy. <laughs> um, so I haven't really portaled them, per se, so that's the other thing you could do. Okay. Um, so when I do the portal, I like to combo that with the shooting ability. So you get like an immediate, yeah. immediate benefit. So I use that on yep. my warriors. So you can pop your warriors, hit them with the portal, and then if you have a rare on that shooting ability, you can hit with like plus one. So you can like pop mm -hmm. up with like a unit of crossbows or something uh, <laughs> next to a unit. So I did that to Jeremy. So I teleported my warriors, had six shots with a plus one to hit against that mounted paladin and just took them out in one go. So, oh, that, and that, that was hurts. another fatigue bomb. So um, yeah, a lot of, lot of options. You know, Jeremy and I are disgusting, you know, there's not a lot of way to get extra dice with the demons, you know, either defense dice or attack dice. So, you know, the way that they win is just going whatever, whatever weakness you left. So you can know what they can do, but you can't, you can cover like the top five, like worst things that could happen to you. But yeah, you know, I'm just going to go for the sixth worst thing, you know, <laughs> that you forgot about or something like that. So, Oh, um, that's so, too good. Yeah. Just to give you an idea of how I've been, playing those guys so nice um yeah it's been a lot of fun the three so jeremy thinks it thinks it's a good build um oh it is a good build i, I, I will second that uh, okay uh we'll we'll see I, i'm not gonna be using it at the event because i don't have the the behemoths painted yet so okay um i'm using some safari limited alien dragons i, I think they work good they'll probably talk about those guys more uh once they're finished but um it's it's fun using them uh it's definitely different and um he, he's pretty demoralized seeing those things i have to say oh, so. oh no oh no <laughs> we'll have to have a show about how to beat the uh, uh other world <laughs> Oh, yeah, It'll be I think, really short. You won't give any tips. <laughs> yeah, I mean you play better. I'll give you. I'll give you the tools to uh, set up for yourself. You can talk into the microphone. <laughs> nice. So, um, yeah, that was a good game. And if you're looking at the photos of it here, we're playing on a plywood board. That's because our local hobby shop is actually closing. But one of the guys in our group is actually opening up a hobby shop. Uh, there's actually going to be another one on the other side of town. So his is going to be focused, you know, completely on miniature games. You know, you will have to have some magic and Pokemon to keep the doors open and the yeah. funds flowing through. But um, we're looking forward to um, seeing what kind of interest we can generate for, for Saga in particular uh, oh, at this excellent. new store. So uh, very cool. All right. Nice, Raj. Uh, yeah, man. So why don't we 
get into, I guess, our main topic, which at the beginning, I'll need to remember that I should announce what our main topic is going to be because I don't think I did that. But in the video description, you'll see Age of Hannibal is what we're talking about today. So I think this was news to you when I mentioned it last time in our discussion, wasn't it, Monty? It, it is, and I'm not sure I'm not sure why I'm oblivious, but I just I know people have talked about uh, you know samurai being one of the universes, and people are ticking off options, and I had no idea what was queued up and what would be dropped next. So mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah, so Alex told me at Adepticon, he told other people, so it wasn't a secret, and it's been posted on the Saga Facebook group several okay. times since then that that I've seen, and when people kind of bring that question up somebody does invariably post post that so that's the next book in the works nice. so if we go back to my interview with alex last year he said he wanted to do two books per year from here on out but that depended on the timing of when you can get that first book out so uh, age of magic came out at adepticon so you know if you're thinking first half of the year is covered so second half of the year we're kind of rolling into it and then i will say that uh, I believe Gripping Beast has posted some uh, Roman Carthaginian allies, the Samnites, the Samites. Yes, uh, I did see that. On their webpage, so I think they're gearing up. So <laughs> Coincidence? Uh, I don't have any official knowledge, Monty, but <laughs> I would have to say hopefully it's going to be uh, pretty soon here that we're going to see oh my gosh. Age, of, Age of Hannibal coming out here. So uh, what... Uh, what do you think about that? Are you are you excited? Uh, I'm thoughts? I'm very excited. I've I've been looking for a reason to paint and play 28 um, millimeter ancients for I mean five or six years. I w I used to do um, 15 millimeter ancients. It was like everything I did back in like 2011 2012, oh, wow. and then that kind of collapsed. Uh, they went to uh, you know I don't know the group kind of fell apart. We tried to move on to another rule set. Nobody could, you know, God, it's just annoying. But nobody could agree on, like, what the next rule set would be. So it just died. So we did nothing. So um, I, I've read the period. I think about it. I've got great podcasts, Dan Carlin prod podcasts on, you know, Rome. And, <laughs> yeah, he's got, all this he's got that stuff, cover, right? yeah. I, I honestly, I mean, I may, we shouldn't talk about this because I still have to finish these, these uh, North Scale. But, wow, that would be, that would be a blast. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. I'm excited. Yeah, so yeah, I'm pretty pumped about it as well. I kind of have a soft spot. Uh, we kind of mentioned. So, you know, when I first moved out of the house and got my, uh, you know, gaming computer up and running, I spent many a night playing Rome Total War. Good so, one. Uh, this time period, I think, just through that osmosis of uh, that game and everything, you know, I can picture all the territories and the fortresses in my mind's eye from all the playthroughs uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. it the interesting thing is the saga scale so if we're talking about the various factions that we're going to see so you know age of hannibal you know that's a specific real specific time period yep. which which i think it's it's good because you can have different I mean, the Romans were very different over, you know, imperial versus republican, uh, for example, and these various kingdoms that they conquered um, kind of changed over time. So this is already after Alexander the Great, and so like I'm thinking of the successor states, and like I, I believe those guys use phalangites, which mm -hmm. are like the twenty foot pikes. Yes. So when I think of saga, <laughs> I. I don't think of the 20 foot <laughs> pikes and like a unit of eight guys of those necessarily. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, what, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, what, wouldn't they be cool if maybe they expanded the scale a little bit? Maybe, I mean, they yeah. did it with Age of Magic. The, the games are yeah. longer. Um, so maybe, maybe that is a possibility that they could move it towards bigger games. But otherwise, I mean, you don't have to use those sticks, but that that's just what stuck out to me. You know, I'm thinking of phalanx formation. Yep. I, I think of bigger units of troops exactly. versus, you know, the Dark Ages, you know, the, the Viking raids and stuff. It's, that scale makes more sense. You know, it feels, feels right, at least for, for the Dark Ages. Um, 
So that'll be interesting. You are correct. You are correct. I, I, that's a, that's a very good point. I mean, it would be, I don't know how you deal with that. I mean, I can, I can like, if you say, okay, imagine it, I can imagine like, you know, um, you know, the age of Hannibal, there's, you know, there's raids, there's, you know, um, what, what is now Spain, uh, Hispania, you've got the, uh, you know, Lusitania. So you could have small war bands hitting small, you know, Roman contingents. So, like, if you're trying to, like, bring the scale down to, like, what Saga is, I can think of those. But then you're right. You get to certain aspects. You're like, okay, so who would be running around, like, in a big, uh, you know, uh, with 20-foot spears? Mm-hmm. And the elephants. I mean, on one hand, you really want them, but good lord, I have an elephant, yeah. and my my war band would be like, "Yeah, we're leaving. I, I'm not uh-huh. going to try to stand." And there's yeah. also some other beautiful stuff that might appear, right? So Victrix did the most beautiful Gallic chariots with um, oh, uh, cool. oh, they've got everything. They've got druids. They're just stupendously beautiful. But then, I mean, and and we have chariots. We have chariots in Age of it's Magic, the- so maybe that could sneak in, right? Uh, yeah, perhaps. And then in the Age of yeah. Invasions, you can take the yeah, Warlord yeah, that's Chariot. Right. That's so, right. Like a unit of chariots, though. I guess I'd have yeah, to go back. Right. I, I don't know what the specific rules are for those undead chariots. But, um, yeah, it should be interesting. I mean, yeah. obviously, it, ultimately, it doesn't matter if if we we're going to push around 12, 12 <laughs> levy. You know, you get a nice little mass of, of yep. bodies there. and. You know, I, I think their strategy. Those guys were like the pincer or the the anvil, anyways. Just push them up. You're gonna have some some rock and saga abilities that are the, they'll be the ultimate defensive unit in your face, and then um, maybe some companion cavalry coming in. Um, so one thing, speaking of cavalry, so when I think of agents too, like I'm thinking more foot foot infantry mm-hmm. kind of style of combat. So we're getting kind of back to the dark ages, and um, Maybe somewhat age of invasions again. I mean, you do have, so I mentioned companion cavalry. So I'm not even sure if the successors states of, of Alexander, if they really use cavalry a lot or not. I, I don't know too much about them. Um, I do think of Numidians and then like the Scythians, you know, you're going to have some yep. horse, horse peoples. But for the most part, I'm thinking mostly kind of foot sloggers. Agree. Um, getting back to some classic saga, wouldn't you say? Yeah. But that could be interesting. Yeah, very colorful for sure. Mm-hmm. So Alex did say there would be elephants for sure. I mean, you you kind of wow. have to, like, right? <laughs> People want to use an elephant, um, and the rules would be, you know, something specific for the elephant. Um, that they're not going to be the same as a creature, for example. So he did confirm that as well when I was poking, poking and prodding him at Adepticon a little bit more about it. So. Um, so what kind of factions here? So the interesting thing is you've got the Romans, Republican Romans, kind of yeah. the classic, the Hastati, the Princeps, and yep. the tri- Triari. So these, these, yep. these are the Rome Total War pronunciations for those at home. So Nicely done. Like to focus on my pronunciation. So hopefully those are satisfactory. Um, but then for Hannibal, you know, he's kind of a multi- cultural yes. force yes he is. and then each one of those so he used numidians so yep. they could be a part of his force and then you could also have a numidian board you know yep. he's got the spanish or iberians yep. i'm not sure what how you want to refer to those folks mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. so he's got those guys they could be either a standalone board you got the the gauls the the gallic tribes you know they made up a huge part of his army you know towards the end there so you know they could have their own board um we're getting into the other side of the the pond there we have the successor states so the ptolemaic egypt seleucid and the antigonid i believe those guys are in greece you have thrace up there um as well i don't know if those are horse guys or not the thracians do you know um they've got some horse they're also just they're just badass of you know hill and mountain people yeah, with so uh, my... bastarne the two-handed weapons just chop you you know uh, yeah. chop so you this in might half be like a Norris Gale type of yeah. situation there javelins <laughs> right. javelin warriors right. and and two two-hand weapon <laughs> heavy weapon warriors um so yeah it'd be interesting to see exactly are they going to shoot for the 12 again you think yeah so i just listed I think you could 
I think you could eight or eight or nine there. I think which are distinctive. I guess I don't yeah. really know between the successor states how different they would be. I could see those, yep. you know, kind of like Carolingians or you know the the Normans or whatever. You could say, you know, if you use these troop types, it represents this one, but also they're just using all the same board, but maybe it's slightly different. But um, so. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting pretty excited. I was over at the Victrix site there, checking things out, and yeah, wow, I I didn't even I guess I thought Victrix made like larger scale models for some reason. I don't I don't know if they do, but you know like you know like uh, 40 mil guys or taller. Um, so that was my perception. I don't know how I got that, but going over there, wow, they got the, almost a the whole friggin' uh, almost every troop tie we mentioned here i believe they they've got exactly. those guys covered uh all in beautiful plastic there so is how is the their plastics working with is it um like a hard plastic or significantly different i know there's different kinds of plastics out there yeah yeah it is it is a hard plastic um they cleaned up pretty well they came out um in good shape and i mean you know i i'm i'm generally not a modeler because i'm more production painting i like get metal figures and just pump them out mm -hmm. but um you know these went together nicely they went together well the head swaps were pretty easy didn't have to do a lot to modify those so um boy i i'm i'm just I'm just waiting for my uh, Vikings to get in. I can't wait to see all the options because, man, I think they give you 40 in a bag, and I got two bags of them because, you know, I wanted to go overboard. So oh, I got to yeah, gotta make sure you got everything you need, <laughs> Lord <All> Montague. Right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, okay, cool. Yeah, um, so hopefully that'll be, I'm assuming that'll be another hardcover like the other age books. Um, I'll be curious to see. So we've talked about the elephants. Um, you know, there, there could be like the phalangites, you know, some kind of long spears, special rules for that. Um, you know, chariots, like you mentioned. So we could see be seeing some new rules here, uh, yeah. potentially. But if not, it sounds like there'll be enough to to chew on, anyways, with a bunch of new battle boards and such. Um, so it'll be it'll be interesting. There'll be another. Uh, version of Rome to to use. So we've got we'll have Republican Romans, the West Romans, East Romans. If you want to split it off, versus last right. Romans, and then finally the Byzantines to close it out. So uh, we need some Imperial Romans in there for sure. We That's gotta bridge it. the gap at, at some point. So Alex, one if day you're listening, uh, it's gotta gotta happen. But by that point, there's not there's not uh, very many folks left for those guys to fight. The Imperial Romans, they've taken taken it over. I think it's just uh, Germanic folks, maybe some Picts up in Britain. And then on the east, um, what, what do they have out there on the east? I think they... Uh, Parthians, Parthians, Sarmatians. But it's more like keeping them at bay. That moment when they were like at their brightest, they yeah. just like stomp everyone. Like we can't, we can't go any further. Like this is it. I know. So, <laughs> um, cool. Well, um, I don't have any other thoughts that that come to mind right now uh, for for me about Age of Hannibal. But if folks are excited about it, what are you looking forward to? What uh, nations haven't we we talked about here? Obviously, you could get into a lot of interesting special characters, uh, legendary characters, legendary units, uh, mm -hmm. merc units. I think there's a lot of fodder out there for for that as well. So it's going to be fun just coming up with just 12 factions from from scratch. I mean, with Crusades. They had the previous stuff to build off of Age of Magic. You know, they stuck with six factions essentially. But here we're going back, potentially the full twelve. I guess we don't know. Um, Age of Invasions was was the six, uh, mm -hmm. and that book was pretty chock full of stuff. So um, it's, it's possible they might go that route. They could just stick with six and then use the uh, you know. Irish battle board for the Gallic tribes or something like that. Not that that would be a necessarily a good choice, but that's something they could do 
And w- I thought that was pretty clever with Age of Invasions, um, mixing in those other battle boards to cut down on the, the play testing work of coming up with... The, it's one thing testing boards against each other versus coming up with a complete board from scratch. Um, so anyways... Uh, let us know what you are uh, most excited about for, for Age of Hannibal. Hopefully it's coming out soon. The plans haven't changed. I haven't talked to Alex since then, but um, I, I've been waiting to talk about it. But again, like how do you do a video um, specifically on that? You know, I'm just going to get you on just to specifically talk about that. Like what are, what are you going to talk about? But after uh, warming up with our hobby chats, question and answers, um, I think we've had some interesting musings here, so much yes, appreciated we once again, old friend. So I think that's probably where we're going to call it at this one, don't you, don't you think? Nice. Nice. Uh, Sounds good, Rog. Okay. So if you guys have questions or comments, post them below, and we'll address it in the next one. The next one, we'll probably be talking a little bit about Saga Storm, probably your experience. My tournament is coming up as well I'll probably do my own little video about that since we're going to have so much to talk about in that next one but I don't think we've set on a topic yet I can't recall but we'll figure nope. it out I mean improv we'll, we'll keep it secret keep it safe <laughs> uh, until then but thank you to everybody watching and listening thank you especially Monty for coming on here um, I, I've had a blast. It's been good talking to you. Yeah. I'm pretty every time, Raj. Uh-huh. Yeah, I've been. It's excellent. I tell you, I've been kind of pent up. My wife's been out of town, so I don't know if you can tell if I'm extra excited or not. But I've had <laughs> basically 72 hours with a three year old by myself, so uh, it was fun being able to talk to a grown up about uh, my, my toys. So <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. Uh, we'll catch you later. See you guys. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. Saga!